Hello and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Higher Week 4 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, basically, thousands of students all around the country have been answering quizzes on my Diagnostic Questions website. And I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've chosen three questions. And you can see those three questions on the screen in front of you. But these aren't just any old three questions. These are the three worst answered questions from that particular quiz. And I've got five challenges for you. So your first challenge is, can you get each of these questions correct? And thousands of students have struggled with them, so that's gonna be easier said than done. And then secondly, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? And then for each of these three questions, can you predict in advance what the most popular choice of a wrong answer might be? And then can you explain why students might choose that popular choice of wrong answer? And then finally, and I think this is the hardest challenge of them all, if you were sat next to one of these students who was struggling with one of these questions, how would you help them out? How would you help them see not only that you're right, but in a nice way that they're wrong? So my advice would be pause this video now, work your way through these three questions, take your time, bear in mind my five challenges, and then when you're ready, resume this video and we'll go through these together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one. Right, let's go through these. Now, I didn't want to mention it at the time, but I reckon these are three of the hardest ones that I've seen from these quizzes. And I know I said that for week three, they were tough, but flipping out, these ones are tricky. So don't worry if you struggle with these. We're going to go through it nice and slow, try and figure out what's going on. So I'm going to start with the least worst answered question, uh, least well answered question first. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to start with the best answered out of these three, if that makes sense. And it is this question here. Okay, which of the following would correctly calculate the value of y? So we need to work out this side here. Now, with all the information we've got, we can't say for certain this is a right angle triangle. It looks like it might have a right angle there, but it looks can be deceptive and we've not been told it, so we can't assume anything. So we can't use our usual Pythagoras or Sokotoa or anything like that. So we've got to turn to our other two things, which is the sine rule which is super useful for non-right angle triangles, and the cosine rule, which is also super useful for non-right angle triangles. Now, you've got to learn these rules, but more importantly than learning the rules themselves, you've got to learn when to use them. So I have one thing that I like to say to my students whenever we're talking about identifying when to use the cosine rule, and that is look for what I call an angle sandwich. Now bear with me a second here. By an angle sandwich, I mean you've got two sides, side there and a side there and you've got an angle in the middle and can you see there it's like that's a bit of bread that's a bit of bread and your angles the meat in the center whenever you've got something like that and you're asked to work out the thing opposite it that is a sign that you need to use the cosine rule that is the sign that that angle sandwich is super useful for working out that thing opposite it, or even, to be honest with you, it's pretty good with a little bit of rearrangement for working out things like that. But if you've got that angle sandwich, that's your setup that it's cosine rule. Whereas if you're thinking about using the sine rule, what I always look for here is if you've got an angle there and a side there, and you've got an angle here and a side there, it's this kind of cross thing. It's this, I've got two opposites that I need to work out. When I see a cross like that in the middle, that's a, a sign for me that I need to be thinking about the sine rule. So I'm looking for an angle sandwich for cosine rule or these crosses, these opposites for sine rule. So what have I got here? Well, I've got a side there, I've got an angle in the middle and I've got a side there. So I've got my angle sandwich, so it's gonna be my cosine rule. So that's all well and good, but I've gotta know what my cosine rule is. So again, there's, there's lots of ways of writing this with different letters, but I, I think of it this way, and I'll talk through what I mean by each of these in a second. A squared plus B squared minus two lots of A, B, and then I need the cosine, or just the cos, of C. And that whole thing square rooted. Now what I mean by that is A and B are your sides either side of your angle sandwich. So for example, if I just find my pen, that side there, 12 might be A, and that side five there might be B. So I've got here 12 squared plus five squared. Then I've got my A and B again, so two lots of 12 and two lots of five. And then I've got cos of my angle that's in the middle of my sandwich of 53 square rooted. So I can see there that that is option C. Um, Option A and B are sine rules, but I don't have my crisscross. 
And option D is really close, but I've got a plus there when in fact I need a minus there. So it's a hard question this, because first you've got to choose whether it's sine rule or cosine rule. Then you've got to remember the intricacies of that particular rule. And it'll be no surprise to you that, well, luckily we've, we've got this question right, but look at that, only just over half the students who attempted this question got it right. The, uh, the most popular wrong answer is A, people using the sine rule. Why, why do they think it's A? I think you need to divide the side length by the opposite side length and then multiply it. So a student's got the head around it. They've kind of seen that it's a bit of an opposite. They've recognized that one of these rules is needed, but they've chosen the wrong one. They've chosen sine rule. Whereas if we had, for example, this angle down here, then we'd get that crisscross for sine rule, but we don't. We have an angle sandwich. Whew, and that, that's the best answer out of these three. What's the next one? This question here. More angles, more triangles, more sides. What is the size of angle P? Give your answer to one decimal place. As soon as I see one decimal place, I'm thinking straight away calculator is going to come into play here. So now look at this. This, this is also a non-right angle triangle. So maybe this is sine rule or cosine rule, but we don't seem to have enough information. But actually, this is a special type of triangle, and those two dashes tell us that this is an isosceles triangle. Now, whenever we have an isosceles triangle, and it's something to do with angles and sides, I always think to myself, let's split it. Let's split it in half down the center. I know it's a terrible line. And let's see what we've got. So if I redraw this here, the first thing to say is if I split it down there, split it in half by drawing a perpendicular line there, I'm going to get a right angle because I've got a horizontal base and a vertical line. Now, as soon as I get a right angle, that opens the door for me to be doing soccer tower and all this. And um, that angle there, what's that angle there? Well, that's still angle P from that diagram there. This length there, that's still 15. But what's this length along the bottom here? Because it's not 10, because it's been split in half. It's half of 10, so it's gonna be five. So now I've got something I can work with. I've got a right angle triangle, and I've got two pieces of information. And the question is, what's the size of angle P? So um, it's gonna be Sokotoro. It's either gonna be sine, cos, or tan. I've gotta to choose the right one. So let's have a think about this. Um, opposite my hypotenuse, uh, sorry, opposite my right angle is my hypotenuse. So that side there is my hypotenuse. Opposite my angle that I'm given is my opposite side, and the one between the angle and the right angle is the adjacent side. So I've got the hypotenuse, I've got the adjacent, so the one that involves that is cos. So I, I know some people like to do this with formula triangles, um, I'm just going to write it out. So cos theta equals, sorry, equals my adjacent side divided by my hypotenuse side. Okay, so cos of my angle p is going to be equal to the adjacent which is 5 divided by the hypotenuse which is 15 and if i want to actually find out what p is i'm going to need to do the inverse of cos which is always what i need to find angles 5 over 15. as i say i know some of you will do this using the classic formula triangle here that looks something like this and we'll have cos of your angle down here we'll have adjacent up here and hypotenuse down here cover up your angle and it tells you to do adjacent divided by hypotenuse however you do this so now i've got to just make sure i tap this in on my calculator correctly so i've got my calculator down here so let me tap this in i'm going to go shift cos I'm going to do 5 divided by 15. I'm going to make sure I close my bracket at the end. And it tells me, and I hope this is one of the answers, it tells me that it's 70.528, blah, 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 blah. Let me have a look. Is that one of them? To one decimal place. There it is there, 70.5. So I reckon the correct answer to this is D. Are we right? Yes, we are. Luckily, we've got that right, but only 40% of students uh, agree with us. Apologies, I messed up my slide a bit here. The writing's going to go over the top. The most popular choice of wrong answer is A, not enough information. Why might a student think there's not enough information? Look at that. Not a right angle triangle, so you can't use Sokotoa. You can't use sine rule because you don't know two opposite sides, and you can't use cosine rule. It's, re it's really smart. You certainly can't use sine, and you certainly can't use cos. And I'd like that idea that it's not a right angle triangle, so you can't use Sokotoa, but as we've seen, we can create a right angle triangle by dropping down that perpendicular height, splitting the isosceles in two, and we're good to go. So keep your eyes out for isosceles triangles. Woohoo! And that is only the second worst answered question. The worst answered one is this one. Now, if you've been following this Beat the Nation series, it will be no surprise to you this. We've seen functions crop up before and cause problems. 
what's going on here? So if f of x equals, so let me write this down. I, I can't do f's very good, but here we go. We have x squared minus 3x plus 1. And what we want is we want f of 2x. Now, what that tells us to do is every time we have an x in our original, we want to replace it with a 2x. But we've got to be super careful about our brackets. So can you see how this is x squared? Well, in my new function, it's not going to be x squared. It's going to be 2x squared. But notice how it's the whole thing. If it helps, I know some students, and I think this is a really good idea, they put brackets around the, in, around the, the letter in the original function, and then you can simply replace that letter with your new letter here, 2x. So take away, not three lots of x, but three lots of 2x and plus 1 at the end. So now we've just got to tidy this up a bit. What's 2x all squared? Well, I'll tell you one thing it's not. 2x all squared is definitely not 2x squared. Why not? Because what we're actually doing when we square it is we're multiplying that whole thing together by itself. So it's 2x multiplied by 2x. So actually it's 4x squared. So we get 4x squared. Take away three lots of 2x. Well, three lots of 2x is 6x plus 1. Is that one of our options? Let's have a look. Yep, there it is there. B. So I think B is the right answer. Have we got it right? Yes, we have. But whoa, look at that. Only 30% of students agree with us. The most popular choice of wrong answer is C. Now, where does C come from? Can you see what's happened there? Well, let's read one of our students' explanations. F of X is a function. F of 2X is the same function, but doubled. It's not quite. You can see what they've done. They've changed X squared to 2X squared, 3X to 6X, 1 to 2. C is the correct answer but to a different question. Do you know what question sees the correct answer to? It's this one. What would be two lots of f of x? That's where you double it. But f of 2x means that you take that letter and you replace it, all the x's, with two x's and take it from there. Whew, you need a cup of tea or a rest after that one. Oh, and I've just shared this one as well. And um, there's a student who thinks the answer's A. Um, now, this is really unlucky, this. They've got the idea, they've subbed 2x into the equation, but you know what they've done here when they've done 2x squared is they've written that as 2x squared when we know 2x all squared is actually 4x squared. Lots of ways you can go wrong with these. They're so tricky. How did you get on with those three questions? As I say, don't worry. If you struggle with them, don't worry. Thousands of students have struggled with, with these questions. They are hard, hard questions. But by confronting them in this way, hopefully we can get our head around them and get them right in future. Um, if you, as this, if this has whet your appetite for more, um, if you head to my diagnosticquestions.com website forward slash revision 2019, then you can access loads of these quizzes to try it yourself. And if you're a teacher watching this and you want to set these up for your students so they can do them on their own, um, if you go to ed.co.uk, you can set this up as a scheme of work or you can um, allocate quizzes individually. Uh, it's all completely free. And if you want to get your students set up on the platform, drop us an email with a spreadsheet with your kids' names and their class names attached to it to hello at ed.co.uk and we'll get your students on the system so they are up and running. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. Take care and bye for now.